It's hard to get these things built in a country that's divided, and it's hard to get them built in a country that, um, frankly, uh, where everybody has a voice at the table. China doesn't have to worry about that. They can just build um, pretty much what they want. That being said, once they try to build those same pieces of infrastructure in countries beyond their borders, I think that they are finding things are not quite that easy, and that is part of what I try to get into in the book. Right. Well, we'll get into that in a second, because that's that's um, one of the most interesting and original parts of the book and vivid. You know, if you go back to uh, Nixon's trip to China and the first kind of opening up and modernization, uh, which I'm old enough to remember watching from the sidelines, at least, um, the feeling among many Americans was Uh, that these were first steps, including uh, China's uh, adoption of free market mechanisms, on the way to its becoming a U.S.-like society uh, that would become also not only more capitalist, uh, but more uh, democratic politically, uh, opening itself up to free speech and free press and so on. Um, the picture looks pretty different now. So what's what's the Chinese model as it's developed? It's been interesting to see China go in exactly the opposite direction. As you note, I think a lot of people thought that it would. Um, you know, it's funny. In the West, we see... Uh, Economies like China's, and we think, oh well, they must, they they, they they're going to democratize. I mean, they have to. That's what happens. You become a liberal economy, and then you become a democratic society. In a funny way, um, being a more authoritarian society is what has helped China's growth so much. And I think that once you sync up incredible capitalistic growth with an authoritarian government, if you can get those two things running parallel, you can get the kind of explosive growth that we could never really achieve in a country um, that's run like ours. Uh, So I think that's one reason why it maybe hasn't gone in that direction. And then another reason is uh, purely uh, President Xi Jinping's vision for the country and his rallying the Communist Party and the people of China behind him. Um, you know, he sees this as a moment when China can really ascend, not just economically, but geopolitically. Uh, I think he sees China as the future dominant, uh, s- you know, sphere of influence in Asia. And he's not content to simply keep China on the track of a peaceful rise, as it used to be called. Um,